happy Monday to you. Should we have and a Monday you, song? And you and you. Mm. Happy Monday. Instagram, what's happening with you? That oh. looks weird. Hello? Hello? All right. Hello, Instagram? Anyway, anyone. What is happening? I don't know. Good morning, everyone. Apparently, oh. Instagram decided to have issues, but welcome we're doing things and people are commenting on Instagram. So welcome to the nursing school show. Christine trying to figure that out. That's Christina. I'm it Matthew. looks weird because it looks like it's buffering to go live on Instagram. Hey, Instagram. Hmm. Tammy, it's Maggie, Polly, Scott. Hello. How, welcome. Are you, how are we looking on YouTube? On Instagram. Can you yes? tell me that you can see us? Okay. Tell us that you can see us. Hey, Jess. Hey, Lisa. If you can see us correctly on Instagram, you only see half of my face. This is kind half. Of, okay. Good right. morning. Anyway, good morning, everyone. We are here. Not just to do some technical issues, but also to answer some nursing school related questions. And so to overcome the technical issues at the same overcome. time. Okay, and to you overcome. can see us. Everyone yes, we can. Okay, is perfect. overcoming. So. They say everything seems cool. So yeah, I don't know what's happening. <laughs> Only see half your face. Hi, Instagram. Right is that too much of my Welcome. face? Do you want me to? There you go. Is that better? <laughs> is that better, Instagram? None of the face. All right. Uh, oh, if you guys have any questions related to nursing school, please put them in the comments below and we will get to them. Do you have a topic for this morning? It no, is but a I'm good sure Monday morning. I'm it sure is a good first day of the shortest month of the year. Happy first day of the shortest month of the year. See, here's the thing. I usually have a soapbox and I will probably go on a soapbox tangent at some point mm. during this See, live. we're That's having amazing. technical issues. Facebook is trying to reconnect. Facebook All is of the buffering. things is happening. Instagram looks funny on our end. I don't know. Okay. Scott's asking, what's the best way to study med Should we start there? Let's, Let's start, start there, there, Scott. All right. Good morning. Good morning, Scott. What is the best way to study med surge? Okay, so med surge and, okay, I'm going to say other things as well. Pediatrics. OB, fundamentals, this goes for everything in nursing school. Four main categories you need to focus on. Okay, friends, ready? Everybody write this down in the chat. All right, so everyone else can screenshot it. Pathophysiology, signs and symptoms, nursing assessment, and nursing interventions. Good. Med surge, this goes for med surge, fundamentals, OB, pediatrics, mental health, critical care. Did I say fundamentals? All the things. Pathophysiology, you have to know what is happening in the body. What is wrong? What is going on in the body? Signs and symptoms. What does that pathophysiology create as far as presentation? Signs and symptoms, link it back to the pathophysiology. Nursing assessment, what is the nursing assessment? What are you gonna assess for based on the pathophysiology and then nursing interventions? What are you going to do about it? Cool? So four main categories. Thank you, Kelly. Pathophysiology, signs and symptoms, nursing assessment, and nursing interventions. Those are the four main things that you have to focus on in nursing school. Now, we get questions a lot from students that say my instructor doesn't teach, or I leave class feeling more confused than when I went in, or they just read off the PowerPoint, or they just tell us to read the book, and there's just all this information, and I don't know what to do. If your teacher has said any of those things or something along those lines, go ahead and throw up an emoji in the cat, chat, chat, cat, in, in the catch, whatever. In the comments. Down below. Four main things. Pathophysiology, science assistance, nursing assessment, and nursing interventions. I know it happens a lot, my friends. The instructors just read from the PowerPoint, tell you to read the textbook. They're like, just read everything in the textbook. You'll be fine for your exam. No, you won't. Focus on these four main categories, pathophysiology, signs and symptoms, nursing assessment, and nursing interventions. All right? We all cool with that, friends? I think I saw a follow-up question. I think it's a follow-up okay. question. Uh, Kanisha, do you need to know the medications that will treat the disorder diseases? Well, so that is now pharmacology. Mm -hmm. Yes, you will. So pharmacology and medications goes into nursing interventions right? So what are the interventions that you're going to do? What meds are you going to give? What treatments are you going to do? So yes, I missed your name. Kanisha. Kanisha. Yes. Yes. Solid question. All right. So uh, can you, Manisha, um, can you on repeat Facebook. that on Facebook? So four main things, pathophysiology, signs and symptoms, nursing assessment, nursing interventions. Mm -hmm. Those are the four things. And I think I want to, 
back up a little bit here and just kind of as a, a general overview, really what we're trying to uh, get you to really think through is how to critically think. It's how to critically think generally about these four main categories because then that will help you understand all the disorders, all the fundamentals, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, about nursing school better. It's really, this is the framework for critical thinking. So to understand all these things, first up is pathophysiology, and then you can critically think based on the pathophysiology, the signs and symptoms that come out, the nursing assessment that comes out, and nursing intervention. So uh, critical thinking is a main part of nursing school. Yes. And so this is really prepping you for that. The alternative way of doing it is just rote memorization. I have this disorder. What are all the signs and symptoms? Nursing assessment, nursing intervention. Memorizing everything. Okay, in what the is? Uh, I have hyponatremia next. Okay, so what's all the signs and symptoms? Nursing assessment, nursing interventions, and literally memorizing everything for every single disorder. That may help you in the beginning, but really, what we want to try and get you to do is critically think about this framework, going through this framework instead, because once you have this framework set up these four main categories set up, you can be thrown a disorder that you don't even know anything about. But as soon as you know the pathophysiology, you can work out the signs, symptoms, nursing assessment, nursing interventions. Absolutely. So let's say you get a case scenario question on your exams. You guys know, you know, that when you get to your nursing school exam, are they going to test you on memorization and how well you memorized things from the textbook? No, 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 they are not. What are they going to test you on? They're going to test you on how well you critically think and apply the information that you learned, right? So that's why we do it this way. We are not here, friends. We are not here to help you memorize everything in the textbook. That's a waste of time. What is better for you is if you focus on these four main categories and like Matthew said, can critically think about it. So pathophysiology, signs and symptoms, nursing assessment, and nursing interventions. Connect everything back to the pathophysiology because what's going to happen is you get to a nursing school exam and you have this disorder that, you know, you they're asking you about case scenario question like your patient has like these are the things that are going on. What are the signs and symptoms that you would expect to see? And it's a select all that apply question and your brain is freaking out like I don't know what to do. This is really, really hard. All these things are going to be running through your brain, right? But now stop for a moment. If you know the pathophysiology and you can critically think through that pathophysiology, you will be more prepared to answer that test question because you didn't memorize just a list of signs and symptoms. But you know the pathophysiology. You can critically think through the signs and symptoms like, okay, that makes sense. Yeah, that could happen. Wait, no, that one wouldn't happen because X, Y, and Z. You see what I'm saying? So you have to be able to critically think through it. Paulina, you're asking, hi, can you give me any idea on how to study for pediatrics nursing? These four things, these four main categories, this framework applies for pediatrics as well. Yep. So pathophysiology, nurse, or signs and symptoms, nursing assessment, nursing interventions, same categories, same framework for pediatrics. Yep, absolutely. 100%. So mm -hmm. pediatrics, critical care, fundamentals. Give me another one, friends. Mental health, OB, all the things. Yeah. <laughs> All the things. Uh, basically anything that doesn't require rote memorization. And rote memorization is like, you know, the kids' developmental milestones, the vaccination schedule, um, you know, the pelvis shape of uh, for labor, like adequate pelvis shape. Um, some of those things you do have to just straight rote just Roto. straight wrote, wrote up memorize. <laughs> that is not a phrase. Straight up memorize. Mm -hmm. However, these four things for everything else. Here you go. Uh, Katerina is asking, would you always do them in the same order? Yes. Yeah. Pathophysiology, signs and symptoms, nursing assessment, and nursing interventions. You have to do it in that order. Four for a few reasons, you have to start with the pathophysiology first. Like I said, you have to know what is happening in the body before you can understand the signs and symptoms, the assessment and the interventions. Like, and you don't have to know exactly what's going on. Like, say you had a patient come in and you have no idea what's going on, but you have a pretty good guess. Like, 
based on what's happening and what they're telling you, like you can think through, okay, this might be cardiac. This might be respiratory. This might be, you know, something. And then because it's cardiac respiratory or something else, these are the things that you would expect to see or assess for, right? These are the things you would need to assess for. And then these are the things you would need to do about it. Right. And then also with like interventions and assessment, you always have to assess your patient first and then do the interventions. We don't just jump to interventions. We always have to assess them first. So yes, it does go in that order. Awesome. Absolutely. Great question. All right. So let me go ahead and finish doing this. And uh, I have a question from Manisha. Uh, okay. Do you have any tease tips for each subject? And I throw this out because we have our uh, friend at Pre-Nursing Smarter that probably yes. can, can help out Miss more with Kate. that. But go ahead and yeah, that. Yeah, tease. Okay. So if you need help with the tease test, um, I have a friend. Her name is Kate. And uh, she is on Instagram at pre nursing smarter. So, Instagram at pre nursing smarter. And then you can go to her website to pre nursing smarter.com. All right. Uh, um, Kanisha, you said, uh, should I only focus on the diseases and disorders that are in nursing hmm. books? Um, really? Yeah. Because here's why your textbooks are going to have basically everything. <laughs> So you're not going to want to know everything. What I want you to do is focus on the diseases or disorders that your instructors talked about in class. Okay. And then um, even if they don't like teach you in class, like we just talked about, if they're not like teaching a lecture class, but let's say they talk about th these disorders on their PowerPoints or study guides or what have you, then you would want to read those sections of the book that relate to that. Does that make sense? So only if your instructors talk about it. But uh, as far as the pathophysiology, uh, you don't have to know everything about everything about everything. No, mm. no. Good point. Jasper, thanks for watching our ADHD video. And a follow-up question, are you guys still in nursing school? So Christina is a nurse. Hello. I am not and have never been through nursing school. I'm just and here. And has no intention of going no, to nursing school. No, no intention. School. So I'm just here along for the ride. Yep. So yeah, glad you enjoyed it. I edit the videos, so I'll Hello. take credit for that, I guess. <laughs> so Awesome. He knows a lot about a lot of things, friends. Oh, oh Olga had a question oh, that okay. uh, I did not type it all down because it was long, but I did want to get to it. There you go. Tips on being successful in practicum. Mm. I didn't get into one of my get into any of my top choices for uh pl and place okay top choices for any uh for and place in an ortho unit starting tomorrow and worried i won't be passionate about it mm -hmm. i wanted l and d oh you wanted l and d see i'm like reverse <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> after having a couple of babies I don't want L and D. That doesn't sound very fun to me. <laughs> um, I think really, like we always talk about, you don't know. I mean, you might want L and D now, mm -hmm. but you don't like unless you've experienced an ortho unit. To be honest, I really like the ortho unit. Uh, I, when I, for example, when I entered nursing school, I was like, I am going to be an ICU nurse. That sounds great to me. <laughs> then I had an ICU clinical and um, decided that's absolutely 100% not where God was calling me to be for several reasons. So you will figure that out as you go along, but you won't, you wouldn't be able to figure that out unless you had those experiences, right? So if you've never been in an ortho unit, you just don't know. Like you think you want LND now, which that might end up being where you want to be and might end up being where you end up, right? Is LND. But at the same time, you're not going to know if something else really sings to you unless you try it. So be open minded. You never know. God, you might think that you're supposed to end up somewhere and God might be calling you somewhere else. You just don't know. I think that's the main thing is, yes, just really be open. Yeah, you might have some preconceived notions, but just be open to trying it. You'll, you never know. Mm -hmm. uh, as far as your second part of that, I find it interesting. Uh, we've talked about uh, motivation a lot in past weeks, but you, you talked about something that's kind of related. I might not be passionate about it. What mm -hmm. do I do? Uh, are do it anyway yeah do it anyway <laughs> of course do it anyway do it with an open heart and mm -hmm. just remember that you don't need passion yeah. we, we we put 
passion on a pedestal nowadays and that you need passion in order to do anything. And if you you're need, not passionate, you don't do it. You need to be but, happy about it. If you're not happy, then you know you're not in the right place. <laughs> My friends, I, that is just, I hope you don't fall for that lie that you have to be happy all the time. It might not be your first choice and you might not be passionate about it, but... Mm -hmm find the silver lining and keep an open mind and learn yep. as much as you can ask a lot of questions and just be that student out there that wants to learn everything and it will yep. show and um yeah it will raise be your the hand. best experience do all the things do all of the Try things it. raise your hand yes yep absolutely okay very good uh kelly any health assessment help and kelly i didn't see if you had any other um details to that uh is there any fo yes. uh, is there any focused help for health assessments not sure if yes you... go to nursing school of success.com forward slash transcript kelly kelly right yes it's kelly yeah, okay go to nursing school of success.com forward slash transcript I think that's right. Can you actually go there just to make sure it's the right page? <laughs> All right. Or else you're going to get a page that says, oops, that's not right. NursingSchoolOfSuccess.com forward slash transcript. transcript. It should be a head to toe assessment transcript for you to follow as you do your health assessment. Maybe. Hey. Look who knows what she's talking about. So okay. for anyone that wants to look at that on YouTube, I can paste it on YouTube. Sorry, Kelly, on mm -hmm. Instagram. I cannot do that right there. But uh, nursingschoolofsuccess.com slash transcript will get you there. Yes, that is a, a word for word. Kelly, seriously, this is amazing. Word for word transcript for you to follow as you do your nursing assessment, your health assessment. It's going to be gold for you, nursing school. I created this my, actually a long time ago, three years now maybe. And because I didn't see anything like it in the world and it really needs to be there. So there you go. There you go. Nursing school of success.com forward slash transcript. Kelly says, perfect. And thank you. I'm glad. Awesome. You go. You're going to do awesome, Kelly. Good job. All right. Uh, cascading delirium. That's a fun name. That's, that's a really fun one. That's a great name. Uh, friends. How do you feel about NGN? NCLEX questions. So I don't know if I've heard that acronym of NGN before. What does NGN stand for? I, I'm assuming it's actually NLN, National League of Nursing. No, that's not right. NGN. The Legion NCLEX of NCLEX Doom. Question. I don't know. The NGN. <laughs> what does NGN stand for? And uh, do you think it would be better to self-teach yourself to answer NGN NCLEX questions or ask instructors to teach you? No, you just have to... For... for for nursing practice questions, you just have to do nursing practice questions. Like no one is going to be able to help, like no one is going to be able to teach you really how to do them. I can give you all the tips in the world, all the, you know, test taking hacks in the world. And we've got a lot actually written out in our study system for you. However, that can, that only goes so far. Like knowing the test taking strategies only goes so far. The biggest thing that is going to help you the most is well, practice, right? Answering practice questions, lots and lots of practice questions. Yeah, so really that's the key thing. Do your practice questions for NCLEX practice questions. We recommend the My Mastery app, right? Mm -hmm. um, again, I'm asking the nurse here yeah. what, what we recommend. My Mastery app, and then mm -hmm. what's the book that we have somewhere? Uh, I don't think I have it over here, but it's called the Saunders Comprehensive Review Guide or Saunders Comprehensive Review for the NCLEX RN exam. Yeah. <laughs> Saunders. Compre if you just go to Amazon or something, type in Saunders Comprehensive Review for the NCLEX. Something like that. I know it'll pop up. Um, that is a textbook that has like study guide and practice questions. So good. And then, um, the, my mastery app is an app for your phone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So definitely for NCLEX style questions, practice questions, practice questions, practice questions. Really mm -hmm. what you're trying to get is used to how they ask questions because it yeah. is a little different than any other exam or question or test that you've taken in the past. So yep. a lot of it is, yes, practicing yourself on knowledge, but also just getting used to 
how they're asking questions and getting used to that kind of mm -hmm. uh, questioning testing. Uh, one thing that you can do to reduce stress is just knowing what you're getting into. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people have uh, stress about the NCLEX. And one way to reduce that stress a little bit is getting used to how they're asking questions. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, is that something you would start just one semester in? Yes. <coughs> Bless you. Excuse yes, me. Kelly. Have a oh, tissue. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Kelly. Um, for practice questions, you there's two benefits that they give you really, Kelly, is um, practice questions will help you understand the content better if they line up with the content you're studying in class. However, that's not even the biggest part. The bigger benefit of answering practice questions is that just like what Matthew was saying, they kind of rewire your brain and get you into the mindset of answering nursing school questions. So not only are you going, is it going to help you with the content, but it's also going to help you just kind of figure out, well, how are these questions answered? Um, you know, what do the questions even look like? It's going to help you be more prepared and less anxious on your exam because you already know kind of how it goes, what the questions look like, you know, what they're kind of looking for, what types of questions they ask, all of those things, which is a huge, huge benefit for sure. So I would start it, you know, Kelly, when I was in, when I was starting nursing school, I got that My Mastery app really fast in the first term. And so, um, you know, just use it. You don't have to use it all the time for every exam if you don't want to, um, but just use it periodically and just get comfortable answering the questions. Now, here's a caveat to that. When you start, <laughs> friends, when you start practice questions, it's going to be a big mm -hmm. fat fail in the beginning, <laughs> you are going to feel like you don't know anything about anything about anything. And that's totally fine. So don't think like, don't expect to know everything at the get go. Don't expect to get a hundred percent of the questions, right? Because you won't, you absolutely will not. You'll maybe get two out of 10, right? Maybe <laughs> the first few times you take those practice tests, like Two out of ten. Mm -hmm. Maybe. So, so don't get discouraged. Don't get discouraged. Just keep going. Power through them. And you'll you'll get better at it. So because like we said, it's not necessarily to get used to the content. It's more about getting used to how the questions are asked and preparing yourself for the exam and how they're gonna test you on the exam. <laughs> Kelly says, we really don't know anything <laughs> about anything yet. Agreed. <laughs> yes. That's fine. Yep. That's how it goes. That's how it goes. All right. So we started <laughs> off this live talking about med surge yes. and fundamentals and, and fundamentals. the four categories, the main framework on studying for these topics. Uh, yep. Zenobia and Diana, you've asked again, how do you study for fundamentals and tips for med surge? I just failed my second exam. So oh. Christina, I want you to go through those four main categories again. Okay. And if you have questions about med surge or fundamentals or any of these topics, go ahead and hit hearts or hit the like button on YouTube if you're on YouTube. So yep. well, let's go through our four main categories while you guys do that. Here we go. Pathophysiology, signs and symptoms, nursing assessment, and nursing interventions. Those are the four main categories that you are going to focus on in med surge and fundamentals and pediatrics and OB and mental health and all the things. This is nursing, my friends. This is nursing. Pathophysiology, what is happening in the body? Signs and symptoms, what is that going to look like? How is a patient going to present? Nursing assessment, what are you going to assess for? And then the nursing interventions, what are you going to do about it? Okay, so with fundamentals, let's give an example for fundamentals. Things like ABGs, arterial blood gases, metabolic acidosis, metabolic alkalosis, respiratory acidosis, and respiratory alkalosis. You've got to know these four main categories. Pathophysiology, what is happening in a patient with metabolic acidosis? Signs and symptoms, how is that going to present? Nursing assessments, nursing interventions, what are you going to do? Along the lines of fundamentals as well. Fluid and electrolytes. 
fluids and electrolytes. Uh, any, like, you know, if when you're studying hyperkalemia and hypokalemia and hyponatremia and hyponatremia and magnesemia and calcemia and phosphatemia, all the things, hypo and the, all the hypers and hypos, you've got to know these four main categories, pathophysiology, signs and symptoms, nursing assessment, and nursing interventions. There you go. Kelly, thank you for posting it on Instagram. Everyone screenshot that on Instagram because Kelly wrote it out for you. Awesome. Ilanos was that asking, was uh, what is med surge? Can you please explain? So what is the definition yeah. of that over-encompassing? Yeah, what so is med surge? Med surge is, it's abbreviated for medical surgical. So when you go on, uh, when you go to a hospital, there will be these med surge floors, medical surgical. So this is any patient that has like a medical disorder or is, you know, coming up, not directly coming out of surgery, but maybe had a procedure done and now they're, you know, post-op recovering. So medical, surgical. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah. yeah I have a sneeze does. too. Here. So Are sneezes going around? You shouldn't use mine. Use another one. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Diana, so you said, uh, what What are some tips for med surge? I just failed my second exam. So again, this is the framework. Those are the four main categories mm -hmm. that you need in order to begin really critically thinking about the different disorders that you'll have in med surge, uh, the different disorders that you'll have to uh, talk about in your exams. Yes. Really, you need to understand these four main categories so you can critically think about what is the pathophysiology for this disorder mm -hmm. and then work out from there the signs and symptoms nursing assessment and nursing intervention because if you do it the other way just rote memorization oh this exam um is about abgs and fundamentals and whatnot so i need to memorize all of these things your brain is going to get overloaded whereas if you have this framework in place it will really help you go further in your exams because you can now critically think about each individual disorder and each individual question. And even though you did not memorize or go through every single assessment for this disorder, you can now work out the categories and figure out better what the most likely answer would be in your question. Now, Matthew keeps referring to critical thinking yes. and critical thinking in nursing school. And so we actually have a critical thinking framework inside the nursing school study system. So if you go to nursingschoolofsuccess.com forward slash study system, you can check this out. It's a digital download book for you. And on page 17, I walk you through nine key critical thinking questions to ask yourself as you study, which will help you figure out how to critically think. Like this is your critical thinking framework here. We also have our DRC critical thinking model that we created to help walk you through critical thinking process step-by-step. -step. DRC. Description, and it's basically what we already went through. Description, definition, reason or rationale. Why do things happen? And then connection, connecting the dots for everything that you are learning. So that is on page 19 of the nursing school study system. So check that out, nursingschoolofsuccess.com forward slash study system. If you're a nursing SOS member, don't go buy it. It's already inside the membership community for you. There you go. Very cool. All right. And on the other side of the framework and the categories and those those four categories of med surge uh lily 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 lily, 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 lily. lily. uh is asking hi guys uh Hello. can you please explain how to better remember anatomy and physiology plus microbiology it's going to help in nursing classes so this mm -hmm. is kind of the other spectrum of that so really what you need to understand in nursing school is on one spectrum critical thinking what we just went through and on the other side what is just rote memorization so these topics, anatomy, physiology, and microbiology, more fall in the category of rote memorization. You just need to remember where everything is and all the microbiology things. Yep. That's a very technical term, just by the way. Absolutely. So, so yeah, um, for rote memorization, what do we do? So for rote memorization, there's really two strategies that I really, really like to use um, whiteboards and flashcards. I, early on in my anatomy and physiology days, we went to Costco and got those two big Costco whiteboards, the big ones, right? From Costco, like Costco sized whiteboards. I also saw them a few couple months ago now at Target. Uh, Target sells big, huge whiteboards. Hopefully they still do, um, but you can check those out either Costco or Target. Um, and then just write things over and over and over again. I really like whiteboards because you can erase it, write it again, erase it, write it again. 
super helpful. So you can draw pictures, do concept maps on a whiteboard, you know, all those things. And then flashcards as well, writing out flashcards, writing out flashcards, writing out flashcards, anything that's really, it's that repetition really mm -hmm. is what it is. It's that repetition. Repetition, seeing it over again, writing it over again, mm -hmm. uh, talking through it out loud, getting as many yes. of your senses involved as possible while studying uh, that that is helpful. So yeah, for anatomy, physiology, microbiology, those things that just has a lot of information. What are some of the other examples that you had? Vaccination schedules. Yeah. Um, the pelvis. Pediatric milestones. Pelvis position for labor. Mm -hmm. um, you know, kind of those things. Those kind of things that just need to memorize information. Those are our recommendations for yeah. that. Teaching Flash other people. And whiteboards. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And of course, like Matthew said, teaching other people, because when you can teach someone else, you know, you're ready <laughs> when you can teach someone else, especially someone who like a lay person who doesn't know um, any medical anything. That's going to be so helpful to you when you are able to teach it and break it down in a way that they can understand, then you know you're ready for your test. Mm -hmm. uh, make sure that you know the information before you teach it to someone else, especially if they don't know the information and can't kind of like double check you. So make sure yeah. you know the information then, if the information is good that you're teaching other people. And then they'll <laughs> ask questions and you'll have to critically think. Yes. And, you know, it's just really helpful process. Yeah. Yep. So for sure. Awesome. For those just joining, welcome to the nursing school show. Christina and Hello. Matthew. Christina is asking nursing school related questions. I usually just read them out loud and say, hey, what do you think? So that's <laughs> what we're here. We're here to help you through nursing school and answer your nursing school related questions. Yes. If you haven't yet, hit subscribe, hit like, hit hearts, hit likes. I said that already. All those things. Yeah. On YouTube, it's really important because we have my friends. I just set out the YouTube schedule for the next, I think, nine months or something. So be sure. Actually, I think through like November or something, we have a full YouTube year almost. So hit the subscribe button, click the notification bell. Mm -hmm. So subscribe, be sure that you bell. are subscribed so that you are notified. Hit the bell too, yeah. Good videos coming. Uh, when we post something new up. Uh, DZX707, how did I get here? I do not know how you got here, but welcome. If this is here for you, or if you came here for nursing school advice, then great. Mm -hmm. If not, then that, that's fine too. I, I'm, <laughs> I'm not in nursing school either, so welcome. Welcome. <laughs> that is funny. All right. Esther has a stethoscope question. Okay. Yeah, so uh, which MDF steps that, that, that? Which MDF stethoscope is better between Acoustica or MD1 Adult? I don't or know. Or which stethoscope would you recommend? This one. This is the one I have. MD1. MD1. This is MD1. MD1. Did she say MD1? She said MD1, so this one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's in hot pink, which is, of course, so makes a big difference. Caveat there. Definitely MD1. check with your clinical site or school. They might Screenshot. be sticklers about color. Hopefully they're not, in which case get the color of your choice. Like hot pink. Like hot pink. Screenshot. But yes, MDFs are are the I way like that them. you went anyway. So I like them. Um, I don't know. I'm not familiar with any of the other like categories of mm -hmm. MDF stethoscopes or what have you. That's what I have. So there you go. Uh, there you another go. question from Olu Uh Tips on how to write a good care plan. Mm, okay. Let's good care plans. Let's do care plans. First of all, get this book, please. Nursing Diagnostic Handbook. Nursing Diagnosis Handbook by Ackley and Ladwig. There you go. This one, this baby right here, will write your care plans for you. So here's the thing with care plans. You do not make up your own nursing diagnosis. Got it? Got it, friends? You do not make up your own nursing diagnosis, okay? Okay. The nursing diagnoses are in the front here of the book. First page in the front of the book. And then once you pick a nursing diagnosis, you come to all these white pages here throughout the whole book, all these white pages, and you find it. And it will walk you through readiness for, let's find one that's, uh, okay, here we go. 
impaired verbal communication. Definition, it tells you what it is. Then it's going to go through the defining characteristics, which are the as evidenced by part of your nursing diagnosis on your care plan. Then related factors. Then it's going to walk you through some patient goals and some nursing interventions that you can do and rationales for it. My friends, I'm telling you right now, it writes your care plans for you. This is everything you need to know and use. Can you show that book again? Yeah. Kelly, for Kelly. Screenshot. Nursing Diagnosis Handbook. By Ackley Lottowitz. Screenshot this. Share it with your friends. I Here, I'll get out of the picture again. Don't say I didn't warn you. There you go. I don't want you to get to like fifth term in nursing school about to graduate and not have known what this book was or used it. Just making life hard on yourself. I think it's like, I don't know. It's probably what, 50 or $60 on Amazon. And friends, I know that that can be a lot of money. But I'm telling you right now. Um, well, well spent. Saves you so much time. Mm. Oh, that's a good one. Kanisha, do different nursing book editions still contain the same information? Oh, no. Does having different editions really matter? Yes, you need the updated edition for this book. Okay, there's two books that you need updated editions for. Where's my drug guy? Oh, it's there right it down is. here. <laughs> so we have two right now. None of these are the latest editions. So be sure you get the latest edition. And you were saying that the latest edition of the drug guide is teal, right? It is teal. Like blue. Like blue, right? Teal yes. is blue. Yeah. Greenish, blue, Greenish, green, bluish. like seafoam. Um, teal. So this book, the diagno the diagnosis handbook book, handbook book, you need the updated edition for. You also need the updated edition for the drug guide. Any drug guide that you have, because they just they change so often. They change so often. So this is the 12th edition. Um, just make sure that when you go on Amazon, you get the updated one. Um, Kanisha, about- you're asking about nursing books. Nursing books in general, you can use a past edition for like nursing textbooks, like your med surge book, pediatric book, because those things don't change as fast as these ones do. Like they will update these they will update the drug guide like we were just creating over the summer our medication database for a membership community and even then some of the meds that i listed out there are no longer available um they have been taken off uh, discontinued from the market so um they change they change a lot so make sure that the davis's drug guide or drug guide that you have and then um the Nursing Diagnosis Handbook by Ackland Ludwig that you have the updated ones for both of those. Awesome. Very yeah. good. Um, just a really quick question, Jackie. I'm not uh, sure exactly what you're talking oh, yeah. about, whether you're talking about the study system, but what was the page for the head-to-toe assessment? Did no, we... that was the transcript. Oh, Nursingschoolofsuccess.com okay. forward slash transcript, Jackie, for the head-to-toe assessment. Um, so you guys, everyone who's just joining us, please, 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 right now, right this second, Right this Type second. in your browser, nursingschoolofsuccess.com forward slash transcript. Nursingschoolofsuccess.com forward slash transcript. So that's going to take you to a page where you can download a full head-to-toe assessment transcript, literally word for word, how I would do patient assessments. You know, like knock, knock, knock on the door. Hi. You know, introduce yourself. All these things mm-hmm. I'll walk you through, like word for word, what to say during your nursing assessment. So friends, I'm telling you, go do it now. It's going to just save your life. Very good. Hope that helps, Jackie. All right. Uh, Jenna, any tips for studying when each LO, and Jenna, I'm not sure what LO stands for, but uh, I'm just going to assume each book or each class or each period or something has 300 pages. So any tips on studying when you have a whole lot of reading that your teacher says you need to do? Hmm. Learning objective. I'm assuming it's learning. Oh, learning, objective. learning outcome. Thanks, learning Jenna. Learning outcome. Yes, when each learning hey, outcome right. has 300 pages. Learning objective. Learning outcome. Yes. <laughs> <sighs> oh man, this is the life in nursing school. This is the life, and this is why Jenna. We say, Jenna, have you been here the whole time? Tell me. <laughs> have you been here since 40 minutes ago, 9 a.m. Um. Four main categories. The four main categories are what you're going to want to focus on. So Jenna, if you missed that, oh, you said you've been here. So you've heard me say this like multiple times, pathophysiology, science and symptoms, nursing assessment, and nursing interventions. That's what you need to focus on. 
So friends, yes, we know that when you get into nursing school, you are going to get a syllabus that's like this itty bitty. And in the syllabus that's this itty bitty, it's going to tell you to read all of those textbooks back there. Every single page, all of it, know all of the information out there in Google. Know all of it before you graduate. <laughs> that is not helpful for you, right? That is not helpful for you. We have a very short amount of time in nursing school. We cannot learn everything that Google has to offer. We cannot memorize everything that these textbooks have to offer, right? Waste of time. So that's why you have to focus on those four main categories, pathophysiology, signs and symptoms, nursing assessment, and nursing interventions. Now, Jenna, what I will also tell you, and I mentioned this a little bit before, was when you are sitting in class, in class or online, what have you, uh, whatever your instructor talks about in their lecture is what you are going to want to focus your study time on. So read the sections of the book that your professor talks about in lecture or read the sections of the book that relate to the PowerPoint because now some we've been told that some nursing instructors don't do a lecture class. Maybe you're just getting a PowerPoint these days. If that's the case, that's fine. Focus on studying the sections of the book that relate to the PowerPoint that they give you. Okay. Because here's the thing, here's the deal, really. What your instructors think about and think of as the most important information for you to know is what they're going to test you on. And it's what they're going to teach you on. And so when they're teaching you on something, that is what they believe are the most important things for you to know and is therefore what's most likely to show up on your exams. Does that make sense? Okay. Makes sense I to me. I hope we're on the same page <laughs> about that. Awesome. Thanks, Jenna. Great and question. And Maria, the link for that we were talking about, uh, nursingschoolsuccess.com slash transcript, I went ahead and put it in YouTube right underneath your comment if you did yep. not see that. So. Yep. All right. Moving on, Alex. Moving right along. Moving right along. I'm first okay. year and starting my first clinical in okay. geriatrics at an LTC home. Long-term care. Ah, got it. Thank Long you. Long-term care. Thank you. All these acronyms, man. <laughs> Do you have any tips? Also just found your channel and loving it. Thanks. Thank you. Any tips for <laughs> clinical? Yes. Okay. I, I'm, I'm guessing. Yeah, unless you want to, for clinical? Alex, if you okay. want to, um, um, yeah, raise your expand hand on that. Raise your hand for everything. Do everything mm -hmm. um, that you can really. Um, I think that the, that's a really good advice. Um, you will feel uncomfortable. You will feel scared. You will feel like you don't know anything. You don't know about anything. anything. Raise your hand. Kelly. I'm with you. <laughs> Raise your hand and volunteer for everything. Do because the only anyway. way that you're going to get better and learn it and learn it well is to jump in there. Yep. Do so, it anyway. Volunteer. Yep. Do it anyway. And uh, even if you only know it halfway, ask the nurse to help you with the other half. Mm -hmm. You know, um, just just raise your hand and do everything. <laughs> Do everything. Yeah. I think you've you've mentioned this tip in the past and I kind of liked it. Uh if you haven't started your your clinical yet to go before and kind of just get the lay of the land so yep. that you know the area, you know where you're going, you feel comfortable about like where to park, et cetera, and where to go. Yeah. Uh, again, this is another thing about just working ahead and seeing what things you can do ahead of time to decrease your stress so mm -hmm. you can focus on your learning. So if you have the lay of the land better, if you know exactly where you're going, that's just a lot, a little less stress yep. in your mind and you can focus on actually remembering the stuff that they're teaching you. So, Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. It's really just, you want to know what is how it's going to run, you know, what it kind of looks like in nursing school. Not only do you have to know everything in the textbook, but you also have to know how clinical goes, you know, who everybody is at clinical, like the nurses and the nurse manager, and the director, all these things. Like there's a lot, there's a big learning curve at clinical. You don't just have to know the clinical things, but you have to know the lecture things too. And all this stuff. It's just, it's a lot. So what Matthew just said, any way that we can kind of decrease that or 
decrease that learning curve, the better, right? So, you know, ask upperclassmen, how does it go? You know, ask upperclassmen if they've if they've been at that clinical facility before, they've walked through it, ask them how it goes, what to expect. Um, show up uh, the week before uh, just to make sure you know where to park, you know, where things are, uh, stuff like that, you know, just to help you get more comfortable with what's going on. Mm -hmm. There yes. you go. Yeah. Anything that you can take out of your head and onto yep. a paper or just doing things beforehand uh, really leaves your brain open so that you can learn. So there you go. Absolutely. Uh, Frank, when researching meds on the fly in clinical, how do you not spend six months not writing down all the S slash E? This ate up so much of my time last semester. Side effects. Side effects. See? Okay. Um, <laughs> you're not a nurse. So Where is my drug guide? Is there, it down there, right please? Here. Good old Davis and his drug guide. Good old Davis and his drug guide. Okay. So I don't know. What do we want? Fluconazole. Sure. Why not? Um, when you go to, that's not a good, that's not a good example because there are no underlines. Um, you want the other one? I need my tabbed one. Okay. Here's this is why you always tab your drug guide. My tabs. Friends. Tab your drug guide. So let me just real quickly walk you through how I tab this bad boy. This is an old one. Get the newer version. But I just take like little sticky notes here. It's a telegram. There we go. Like little, um, what are these called? Little flat. Like they're just post-it notes basically, but they're clear and they're small. So post-it notes. And I just tab. Can you see that? I don't know if you could see that. Mm -hmm. See that? I tab the most common medications that I use. Okay. So it's beautiful. It helps so much. So because I'm looking for like, here you go, ACs. There you go. Right there. Um, famotidine. There you go. I'm looking for furosemide. It's purple right there. So furosemide, for example, furosemide is Lasix. Most nursing students are um, familiar with Lasix. You'll learn about that medication. It's a diuretic. You'll learn about it in probably your first term in nursing school. So this is a really good example. There's a lot of, if you look at the side effects, can you get up there? Okay. Can you guys see that? Kind side of. effects from all the, okay. Instagram, YouTube. Oh, YouTube. Sorry. <laughs> it's a little blurry. <laughs> um, but hopefully you can see that there are underlines and then there are red, uh, red letters, red words. Um, <laughs> uh, I was going to make a Bible joke, but that's not. I was going to say the same joke. <laughs> but, all right. Okay. Um, so the underlines mean that uh, that is the most common side effects, like common side effects. And then red words is not what Jesus said. <laughs> the red words are the life-threatening side effects. Okay, so there's two different kinds that you're going to want to focus on. You're going to want to focus on the underlined ones, and you're going to want to focus on the red ones, okay? So, uh, this was Alex, right? Uh, yes. Okay, oh, Alex. No, sorry, Frank. Frank, Frank. Um, when researching the meds on the fly at clinical, how do you not spend six months writing down all the side effects? <laughs> Ate up so much time last semester. So, that is really the thing you want to focus. If you come across a med that you don't know about, at clinical, um, you want to condense your time on focusing on what um, is the most important. And that is the most common side effects and the life-threatening ones. So you don't have to write down all of them. Now, here's the thing. Um, Kelly, you're talking about this too. Yes, Kelly, get the physical one. So helpful. Um, physical textbook. <sighs> You want to make sure that you are connecting the side effects back to the mechanism of action of the medication. So just like we do for med surge and the pathophysiology and the signs and symptoms, the nursing assessment, the nursing intervention, the same goes for pharmacology. You need to understand the mechanism of action, which here they, they call it the action. What is the action of the medication? Do you guys see that right there? Action. Oh, wow. That is either blurry yeah. <laughs> or you can't see it. Sorry. <laughs> but it says action right there. That means the mechanism of action of the medication. So you have to know what is happening in the body. What is the medication doing in the body? 
And then from there, you can more be able to critically think about the side effects of that medication. What does it look like if the med works too well? What does it look like if it just does all of its thing, if it does its thing and works too well in the body? That's going to be your side effects, a lot of them. So there you go. Awesome. Miriam, are we talking about pharmacology? Yes. And yes. good. That's just what I came for. So oh, good. The, the book that we're using is Davis's drug guide. If you did not see. And I do tab it. So um, it's just, I just tab medications. It's just, the color does not matter. It's not by drug class or anything like that. It's just. Well, hers does not matter. And it's not by drug class. Um, people in the membership on our private face group group have shared they do, that they yeah. do tab it by medication class. Yeah. So. Then, whatever you want to do. Yeah, whatever you do, whatever I makes it helpful to you. Organized. But definitely get the physical book, the latest edition. Yes. Yeah. Which Matthew was saying is teal. Like it's they just teal. came out with one. So mine is green. This is a few editions mm -hmm. a while ago. So there you go. Uh let me see. Olu Oluwafunki. Thank Hello. you for answering my question. You are welcome. Sorry, I butchered your name. <laughs> um Stag Connie. Hello. And Miriam, hopefully that's what you Hello. were wondering about pharmacology. So, so good. Uh, let me see. Let me see. Where are we at? Yep. Oh, okay. Hesse study tips. Let's do it. Um, the same thing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> really the same thing, but also slightly different. So when you're taking the Hesse, who's taking the Hesse or ATI? Raise your hand. Raise, Raise your, your hand. hand if you're taking Hesse Hit the like ATI. button. Hit the hearts. Yeah. If you're give me an emoji yes. if you're in a Hesse or ATI program. A lot of a lot of you guys are in an ATI program. I think it's more common. So hit that like button if you're in an ATI or a Hesse program. Um, raise your hand. Throw up a emoji. Um, for Hesse and ATI, you want to make sure that you focus on those four main categories, right? Pathophysiology, signs and symptoms, nursing assessment, and nursing interventions. That is so important. Patho, signs and symptoms, nursing assessment, and nursing interventions. Now, on top of those things, because the HESI and the ATI, it's going to test you on those four main categories for everything you're learning, right? On top of that, you want to make sure that you are also doing the online slides. So, okay, a lot of you guys are... Um, and ATI, HESI, yes. So HESI and ATI, kind of a mix there. Um, yes, yes, yes. Okay. HESI and ATI. Do you have access to online slides? Do you have access to online resources? Tell me in the comments, tell me in the chat. Do you have access to the online resources? If you do, you want to make sure you're going through those. So my program used HESI. And so we had access to an online like slides thing, like PowerPoint kind of thing. And so I would go through those and then we could do practice questions. Same thing with ATI, do the practice tests. Do the practice tests. That's going to help you so, so much. So uh, Ariel, I said, yes, with ATI, you have, um, you have the uh, like online resources. Yeah. Make sure you're doing the online resources. Make sure you're doing the practice test. Make sure you're focusing on those four main categories, patho, signs and symptoms, nursing assessment, nursing interventions. Um, Kella, yes. And yes, like Elsevier, Elsevier will have the supplemental online stuff. Kelly, are you using the HESI program? Uh, yes. Access to ATI, uh, sorry, ATI modules and quizzes. Perfect. Yep. Uh, area. Also, those four main topics that we covered, the framework, the categories, uh, pathophysiology, signs and symptoms, nursing assessment, nursing interventions. Mm -hmm. That's the same for mental health, too. You were, yes. you were asking about mental health semester tips. Same four categories that you study to help with mental health as well. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Uh, Kelly, you say, no, we don't have access to that. So just do practice. Oh, so Kelly, you're not in a HESI or an ATI program. That's fine. Kelly, do exactly what we were talking about before for you is, um, you know, focusing on reading the sections of the book that your professors talk about in class. That also goes for you HESI and ATI students. Focus on reading the sections of the books, practice questions, practice questions, like Kelly, what we talked about, that Saunders Comprehensive Review Guide, the My Mastery app, all of those things. But if you are friends like Maria, um, Ch uh, Chastity, well, so many of you guys <laughs> on and, and on Instagram are in ATI HESI programs, um, 
make sure that you are, you know, reading these sections of the ATI book that your professors talk about in class. Make sure you are doing these slides and the practice questions that go along with it. All of those things. Um, yeah. Maria, to go over those four things again, pathophysiology, signs and symptoms, nursing assessment, nursing interventions. Yep. Absolutely. Patho, signs and symptoms, nursing assessment, and nursing intervention. That's really the bread and butter for bed surge, for fundamentals, mm -hmm. for nursing school. Everything in nursing <laughs> school. Absolutely. Hey, uh, you guys, so we have such good videos coming on YouTube. Can you please, if you're on YouTube, hit that subscribe button and click the notification bell. Ding! Okay? Yeah. Ding. There you go. Hit subscribe, click the <laughs> notification bell, because we have a lot of great med surge stuff coming down the coming pipe, down the road the pipe coming down the road <laughs> for you <laughs> so hit the subscribe button click the notification bell so you don't miss it okay and if you're on instagram or facebook go to youtube hit subscribe click the notification bell hey did we just pass sixty thousand subscribers on youtube can we just know, have a moment we? for that a moment of silence. whoa <laughs> okay you guys are amazing thank you very much everyone thank you. and glad you're enjoying um, so Tanisha fun. actually has a kind of follow up question to the, those four things. Would you study the pathophysiology of cardiovascular disease as a whole or the list of cardiovascular diseases? That's a fantastic question. That is a great, great question, Kanisha. I don't know if anyone has ever asked that before, and I would love to tell you the answer. So the answer to this is that you need to understand how the cardiovascular cardiac just, uh, system works first and then dive into the specific disorders. Does that make sense? So you need to understand, okay, how does blood flow through the heart? What's normal? Like what's yeah. the physiology? So what's the normal? What's the baseline? First? What's normal? And then we're going to add on to that. Once we know how the electrical system works in the heart, how the blood flows through the heart and through the body. Once we know what's normal, and then we can move on to the med surge disorders and diving into, okay, now specifics, we can get into abnormals. What happens when things go wrong? Stuff like that. There you go. That was a great question. I don't know if we've ever had that question before. I really enjoyed answering that one. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. That was great. Happy Monday. Happy I Monday, everyone. I'm coffee. I'm like, it's. Like it's when you get all the foam at the bottom. Do you guys see that? I don't want to dump it out. Do you guys see that? It's all the foam. I drink my coffee so and slow. I need this one that keeps it hot because <laughs> I nurse it all day. That's so funny. how about you guys? Do you use the like insulated cooler or the just normal one because you drink it really, really fast? I drink my coffee really fast. Like why would you drink coffee slow? I don't understand. That makes so no it sense lasts to me. the whole day. Well, if you wanted it to last it the whole day, you could just get one in the morning and then have another one in the afternoon. <laughs> That makes more sense to me. <laughs> sure. Okay. All right. Okay. Insulin cooler. That's funny. Oh, man. Mm -hmm. So funny. You're welcome, Kanisha. I am glad that that helped. Oh, my friends. Uh, One more. Uh, oh, Moonlight. Moonlight Let's and Starry Eyes. Bestery. Hello. Bestery. Yes. I remember you because I like your name. Mm -hmm. Uh, Normal Cup. I agree with Christina. <laughs> you guys drink your coffee too fast. Little Sweet. little tip there. Just slow down a little bit. Mm -hmm. All right. Anyway, what do you do to prepare for nursing school before you start? What's the one thing you should focus on and study and do and get right and be able to do in your sleep? Dosage calculations. Got that? <laughs> dosage calculations. Focus on yes. dosage calculations. Focus on learning dimensional analysis. Yes. And here's the best news, my friends. If you're on YouTube, go to YouTube, type in nursing SOS dose calc. You have to be able to do dose calc, like Matthew said, in your sleep before you start nursing school. Now, here's the thing. You don't need to be able to do that. Like, you don't need to be able to do dose calc in your sleep. However, it's really going to help you because when you get into nursing school, the first two weeks of your nursing school exam, the nurse first two weeks of nursing school, you are going to have a dose calc exam. You have to get 100% right on it. Have to. That's just how it is. That's just how it is. Some nursing schools will allow you to miss one or two questions, but that's few and far between. So make sure that Good. you... 
understand dimensional analysis and dose calc before you start nursing school, setting yourself up for success. There you go. That's I'm really so glad that the practice problem saved you, Kelly. That's really the top priority. Uh, yep. is really just getting dose calc under your belt and being being very comfortable with it. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. <laughs> I like how people in you guys' nursing circles use all your nursing terminologies. <laughs> Frank says, take a drink, then microwave Q five to ten minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, you know what Q Frank. Is? You know what Q is? No. Every, every. Every five to ten minutes. Yes. <laughs> take a drink, then microwave every five to ten minutes. That's so funny, Frank. Yes. Um, all you, know, you that's what we nursing do. people that's what we do so, <laughs> oh my friends this was such a good ama such thank good you. questions thank if you, you for are all your questions just joining us make sure that you go back and watch this because this was jam-packed with probably the best some of the best tips we have okay so hit subscribe that. hit the bell as well YouTube. Things are coming down the road, Hit according to our three-year-old. Hit subscribe. Click the notification bell. Yes. <laughs> Here comes the videos <laughs> coming down the road. Everything's coming down the For road. For him, everything's coming down Everything. the road. Everything. <laughs> Everything is. Yes. Okay. What do you focus on maternity and OB when prepping for the NCLEX? We answered that question earlier on in this live. Go back and watch it. All right, my friends, we will see you on Wednesday. Take care. Take 9 care. Pacific. See ya. See bye you. bye. Bye. Come.